but you got to continue in the Word. Hallelujah. And when Jesus walked the earth, they had all the scrolls of the Old Testament. Okay? Jesus knew the scroll. When he went to the synagogue, he knew where to open it up and find where it was written, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Okay? He knew where that was because he was familiar with the scroll. See, people fail to remember that Jesus was a man. Okay? And the Bible says in Isaiah 11 that he had to learn, see, things. See what I'm saying? He learned certain things from his parents, from his uncles, from his aunts, okay, from his grandparents as he was growing up as a little boy. Hallelujah. But he was also teaching, see, he was teaching because the Holy Spirit was within, see. People have this misunderstanding that Jesus, they say, Jesus, some people, he received the Holy Spirit at the, at the River Jordan. No, he was filled with the Holy Spirit his whole life. He knew who he was. When he was 15 years old, he knew who he was. But he didn't go around parading it and, and acting all big. See, he was humble, wasn't he? He was humble. Until the day the Father appointed. And then he was even more humble. Hallelujah. See, the dove came down so John the Baptist would know. That's the one. Hallelujah. That's the one. My cousin. And then John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God. See, he knew. The Father said, That's the one. And Jesus went out. What happened after he was baptized? Right out into the wilderness. Tempted of the devil. Tested. Tried. See? And we talk about the baptism of fire coming and revival coming. But we don't want to go through the trial, do we? As a church. Well, this is a call from the Almighty. Get your heart prepared to go through the trial. Cry out to me, says the Lord. And I will make you ready to stand every test and every trial and every single storm that is coming upon the earth and that is even here right now. We have to be obedient to that word. We have to continually cry out to Father to make us ready, to keep us ready. He loves His people. He is in absolute love with His people. He loves us. And He does. He knows everything everybody's doing. He knows the sin people are struggling with. He knows everything that's going on in your, in your lives, in our lives. He knows everything that's happening. That's why He applies the pressure here and applies the pressure there. That's why He releases it over here and releases it over there. God's work is a true, thorough, complete work. It's not haphazard, okay? It's very definite. It's very precise. And He is doing the work. Be blessed today knowing that we are going, we are appointed unto suffering. It says it in the Word. I just read it to you. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. Study that chapter out. See about the Thessalonians, how they were they were appointed God said it was like uh, it was a I just have to read that one more time because I'm just sometimes you have to read these things over and over again in order to understand exactly what the Holy Spirit is saying because people don't they just kind of flip them and go through the Bible uh, so that we ourselves glory verse 4 in glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith you see, they had patience and faith. See, where did they get that patience and faith? In all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. See, they were birthed from the persecutions and the tribulations. They had faith. They kept looking up, calling out to Jesus, calling out to the Holy Spirit. Oh, Father, oh, God, help us in this time. They were crying and worshiping God and spending time in worship. Paul and Silas were in prison middle of the night with their backs lacerated from being whipped. And what were they doing? They were worshiping. They were praising God. And what did God do? He sent an earthquake. It's time for us to worship people. It's time for us to, to praise God and worship Him. And watch. He's going to send an earthquake. He's going to send an earthquake. Hallelujah. He is. See? And He's going to free many of you. 
Many of you are socked into debt. God's going to free you of your debt. Hallelujah. Well, how's he going to do that, brother? Is he going to give me a million dollars? No. He might not do that, but he can free you from your debt. He's got thousands of ways to do so. Hallelujah. Just begin to worship him. Watch him work. Hallelujah. But look here. Verse 5, which is a manifest token, the persecutions, tribulations, manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which ye also suffer. Now, did you hear that? Read it. When you get a chance, open your Bible and read I'm going to post it in the comments. I mean, in the uh, more information, I'll post this whole chapter right there. And no, our God does not lie. He does not lie. The Holy Spirit wrote through the Apostle Paul that there's nothing that can separate us. I'm going to read that. Okay? People think, oh, I'm going to be separated. Oh, I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be lost or whatever. No. If you're a born again believer and filled with the Holy Spirit of God, God's bringing you. God's bringing you, Christian. God's bringing you, son, daughter. God's bringing you today. Paul said here. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who? Shall tribulation? Or distress? Or persecution? Or famine? Or nakedness? Or peril? Or sword? As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay. Nay. In all these things we are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. More than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded, and I am too, and my wife Sharon is persuaded also. We are persuaded together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God. Hallelujah. Which is in Jesus our Lord. Which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul said he was persuaded that neither death, what's your worst enemy? The worst enemy that humankind has is death. And it cannot separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Be encouraged today. Nothing can separate us. Nothing. He is able to perfect that which belongs to Him. And as believers in Christ, in the finished work of Calvary, and the descent and the resurrection and the, dis and the ascension of Christ into heaven at the Father's right hand and the pouring forth of His Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost filling the earth out. We know that He has us and we know that He will perfect in us the work He began. Philippians 1 verse 6 He who has begun a good work in you will complete it, will finish it until the day of Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God.